Hey guys and gals, it's Mr. Know-It-All here, and I've got to share something with you on this beautiful Pensacola day. Hey guys and gals, Mr. Know-It-All here. We're going to do some St. Louis ribs on the Oklahoma Joe's Reverse Flow Smoker, and they're going to be fantastic. If you want to know how to do St. Louis ribs, they're usually the cheapest of all the ribs you can buy, and they're really good if you follow this recipe. And we're going to use dried oak, and get the temperature up between 2 and 225 and it'll take five to seven hours depending on how thick the ribs are but uh, it, they're going to be good so just follow along and we also have some smoked baked beans that we're going to share with you how to make so as you see the smokers set up really well we'll take a look at the wood that's inside and we got some charcoal down below to get the wood chunks going and we'll open up the stack here to be able to get the uh, temperature up where we want. We'll open it wide open. Alright this is a 10 pound package of St. Louis ribs. There's our rub and I'll give you the recipe to that in the description as well. Julio tell everybody where all the tools are located. Thank you Julio Cesar Chavez Rodriguez Fiji. We paid $2.40 a pound for this rack of ribs. Again, it's 10 pounds. We're going to uh, open it up and peel the membrane off it so that the smoke will get through. Ought to be really good. All right, now what we're going to do is remove the membrane here. And it's real simple. Use your paper towel, get a corner started. And the uh, paper towel lets you grip it. And I kind of roll it up into it a little bit. What this does is allows the smoke and flavor to get past the membrane into the meat. Like that and we'll get this piece over here you can, will not be able to do it without paper towel I'm gonna to put just a little bit of the gray poupon on it and we'll put a little bit right there a little bit right here Put a little mustard on, not too much. We'll do uh, this side, then I'll do the other side. But I have, I like to try something new every time I do these, any type of smoking. And the Grey Poupon ad actually adds a lot of little tangy flavors to it, mixed in with the regular French's mustard. And the reason I freeze the rub is because I touch it with my hands that have touched pork and if I freeze it I don't have to worry about it getting bad then you just take the rub sprinkle it on as heavy as you want and there's a little bit of cayenne in it a little bit of pepper coarse ground pepper brown sugar smoke paprika so that's good for that side and you tap it in quick before it gets too sticky because it'll pull off if you do do it too late tap it in like that some more gray poupon And you can always take a cloth and wipe your stuff off with a little bleach water. That way uh, you keep it sanitized. I like to put a little extra on the meat side and just tap it in. There, that one's ready to go. So we'll go throw that one on and I'll do the next one. All right, there's the temperature already this morning at 8 o'clock a.m. 
over 90 degrees and uh, the ribs were done just walking from here to over there I'm just kidding all right we got the ribs on we're sitting at uh, right around 200 degrees we got the damper down on top everything looks good we're going to stick our digital thermometer in the end here just for a safeguard to really keep our eye on the temperature that's uh, kind of important and uh, you'll find that very handy we've got the ribs on as I said and we're going to take a look at them here and then we're going to go in and show you how to make the baked beans you're going to love them I'm telling you there they are look at the smoke in there and they look beautiful just being put on got a pan of water in there let's go make some beans all right now we're going to do smoked baked beans all right we're going to use the uh, bushes originals and we have two tubs here that'll go in the smoker and we're going to add some mustard this is about all I add that's probably a tablespoon then I add about a tablespoon of powdered garlic and then about a tablespoon of minced onions then to really set off the flavors we use about a teaspoon or so of Worcestershire sauce these will be the best baked beans you've ever had and then the creme de la creme we like to use Sunny's barbecue sauce and I add about three tablespoons of that or so maybe four mix it up and we'll stick them in there and smoke them right along with the ribs and it'll be so good you won't even believe it and then we'll stir them a few times while they're smoking and then I always like to try them before I smoke them make sure they have the uh, exact flavor I'm looking for smokiness and tangy spicy-ish you'll know and you can finish it off by putting some good smoked bacon strips across the top already cook it pre-cooked bacon and then finish off the baking they're smoking actually the last uh, hour or so and uh, again you will not have baked beans this good and it'll have that great smoke flavor in them there we go all right well, let's check them out here we're at about 194 i got my bottle of apple cider vinegar and water mix i've just sprayed them down here you want to do it about every hour look at they look beautiful we'll hit them again and uh there's the beans cooking there's our pan of water and I'll mix those beans up stir them about every hour when I spray this I will mix the beans up and that look good all right now if you can get three four hours of smoke time on your meat your ribs or pork butt or whatever it is you're doing other than brisket of course when you got weather coming in that could possibly rain on you you can put it in the oven and finish it out but we haven't got any sprinkles yet so we'll see we're at 218 which I'm real happy with that and I'll take a look at them 
lot of smoke. I'm going to spritz them down again with vinegar and water. And the ribs are starting to pull away from the bone back here. So looking pretty good. I'm going to cut one and see what it uh, looks like. That's how I like to do it. You can use a thermometer, but with these big ribs like this, it's best to cut into one and try the meat. God forbid I got to do that. Just kidding. I enjoy it. All right, here are the beans. The beans are all done. We're going to cover them with foil. And I'll go show you exactly what the uh, ribs look like. Well, they're done and they look beautiful and you can see that the bone was pulling away from it and that's always a good sign right there and uh, there's the other one underneath but they're beautiful now I'm gonna wrap them up and let them set we're not gonna eat for a couple hours and they'll be beautiful at that time alright we cut one rib off and the internal temperature was 172 and we'll cut a piece off and try it once it cools down a little bit but you can see it's still real juicy and once you cover them and let them set for a half hour cover them with foil or butcher paper they will continue to cook to perfect perfection so I'll let you know if I was correct on uh, pulling them off it's been about five hours 